If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are two things you can do. Flipside Gaming is offering a 10% discount for any order $10 or more if you use the promo code VOIDMAGE on their website. That is VOIDMAGE in all caps. I will also have an affiliate link to TCGplayer.com. If you use that link, any purchase you make on that website will go towards supporting the channel. I appreciate the support. Also, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech. I'm going to do something new this time. Most of my decks that I do, I end up making them hundreds of dollars. It's usually what happens when you try to optimize your decks. You put in a lot more value than you think. Cards that are really good in the decks that I play, but they are quite pricey. So what I'm going to do here today is give you guys a deck that I think is playable in a casual to competitive setting. I mean, let's not get crazy here. It is pretty tame, but considering that it's under $20, I think it is capable of giving you a fighting chance in most playgroups. The commander I chose to go with is Sheree Shizo's Caretaker. This whole deck is going to be built around this card. And a reminder, my affiliate link to TCGplayer.com and the link to this deck is going to be in the description below. There's two separate links. You you get a better idea of the price for this deck by going to that link. It is definitely under $20 though. So what's the goal here with Sheree Shizo's Caretaker? Well, 5 mana, 2-2 two, two Legendary Spirit. Whenever a creature with power 1 or less is put into your graveyard from play, you may return that creature card to play under your control at the end of turn if Sheree's also in play. I'm not going to lie to you, before, whenever I tried to optimize this deck, it still wasn't that expensive because most of the creatures, the components of this deck that really make it work well, are already at the common and uncommon level. They're pretty good, giving you things like card draw, working with the discard theme. It's very easy to accumulate advantage because every turn, including your opponent's turns, you could be sacrificing creatures and bringing them back because Sheree isn't just on your turn, it's at the end of turn, period. So all you really need is a good sack outlet and a developed board state. And again, most of these creatures are at the common and uncommon level. We're not talking about five drops or seven drops. We're talking about one drops, two drops, three drops at the most, and that's going to be the majority of our deck. So it's going to be kind of mono black aggro in that approach, and the entire price of the deck is including Sheree. I know some people don't include their commanders when they go for budget builds, because it's not always consistent, and sometimes you want to build a budget deck around a very expensive commander. So let's start it off here with the lands. To be honest, making this deck under $20 means that you do have to cut out some better lands. I'm only going with 38 basic swamps. It makes the rest of the deck a little bit easier to build. Now, removal in mono black is actually really easy to find at a cheap cost. Defile is a newer card from Modern Horizons, about 25 cents. Target creature gets negative one, negative one until end of turn for each swamp you control. Since we're only playing swamps, this is a good card. Doom Blade has been around forever, destroy target non-black creature. And Murder is yet another one. You don't really need to worry about things like Damnation, which are way too expensive, if you just have good solid targeted removal. We do have some removal that's going to take advantage of what our deck wants to do. Spark Harvest, it's a strictly better bone splinters, so we can sacrifice a creature to destroy target creature or planeswalker. In a similar sense, we're also playing Eliminate the Competition, which is sort of a much bigger Spark Harvest, and we have a bunch of creatures we want to sacrifice anyway, so being able to destroy X target creatures, it's a cheap but effective if you're looking for mass removal, because again, things like Damnation are too expensive, but that's pretty much the sorcery instant way of removing creatures. The rest of that we should be able to accomplish with our cheap creatures, their ETBs, their death triggers. We should find some pretty good ways of doing that. Now we need some way to protect Sheree because it can't just be throwing her out there turn 5, waiting for her to get removed just to wait another couple turns to play her again. It's going to slow down the deck. So Kaya's Ghost Form, not only is it a cheap common, but it's a great way to ensure that even if our opponents are able to exile her, Sheree will come back. Dark Privilege is another inexpensive way that we can keep Sheree out there while also synergizing with what our deck wants to do. Dark Privilege will let us sacrifice the creature to regenerate Sheree. And in a similar sense, we have other auras that are going to help us regenerate. Blessing of Leeches and Soul Channeling. Very cheap for what they do. We can't really afford things like Lightning Greaves. Swiftfoot Boots is, believe it or not, a little bit too expensive for the deck to keep it under 20. So at the common level, 
they're not fantastic but they get the job done now as far as artifact ramp goes it was really difficult choosing which ones i wanted mind stone is probably the most that we could afford to put in this is about a one dollar common and allows you to ramp up by one which isn't too good but in this deck considering we don't have soul ring it's actually fantastic unstable obelisk kind of the same thing but it does give us some late game removal but enough about that let's talk about the creatures already because we have quite a few there's 40 in total so even though they're not powerful you should be able to set up a line of defense we don't have the best ramp but blood pet kind of makes up for that we could sacrifice it to add a black in our mana pool death cultist can sacrifice itself target player loses a life and we gain a life fume spitter sacrifices itself to put a negative one negative one counter on target creature so if we can keep bringing this back it's going to be another way we can remove creatures and plague grisalka is kind of the same thing in that sense but a little bit worse because instead of negative one negative one counters it's just negative one negative one until end of turn abyssal gatekeeper is one of the best creatures you can have in the deck because it's like a cheaper flesh bag marauder you can just sacrifice which is also going to help you sacrifice your other creatures and it should also help thin out your opponent's boards black cat is going to be one of the first creatures we talk about with a the sub theme of the deck which is discard because if you do have a reliable sack outlet and a couple of these creatures you can make it hard for your opponents to have a hand they're just going to be discarding a ton of cards black cat forces an opponent to discard a card at random so you should probably want to kill it off and bring it back over and over again burglar rats one of the newer creatures that fools around with discard forces each opponent to discard a card so this is one of the big cards in the deck if you can constantly kill it and bring it back with charade it's going to make it harder for your opponents to come back in the game doom dissenter another theme with the deck just a aristocrats in general when they die you get some value off of them this one's gonna let you get two two zombies dusk legion zealots good card draw enters the battlefield you draw a card and you lose a life it helps speed up the deck gleaming barriers another good advantage creature an aristocrat when it dies you create a colorless treasure artifact creature token that sacrifices itself to add one mana of any color to your mana pool doesn't really hurt that you have a creature with some decent toughness considering a lot of the creatures in the deck can get steamrolled colostria healer is another pretty good one it does have the whole ally mechanic with rally but that doesn't really matter we don't have any other allies in the deck when it enters the battlefield each opponent loses a life and you gain a life just that slow advantage you really want to grind away at your opponents with this deck lazotep reaver kind of the same deal as with doom dissenter but this time you have the awesome amass mechanic so if you have an army out there and you can keep killing this off you can just make that token bigger lead mirror is pretty awesome because it's just a creature that taps for one black mana it also happens to be a 1-1 one -one, so it fits the criteria of sure in another way that we can also help make up for the lack of artifact ramp. Mirsire is another creature, another aristocrat. Like Doom Dissenter, when it dies, we get a 1 1 colorless mirror artifact creature token. Orzhov Enforcer, same thing. The afterlife mechanic is even better, in my opinion, though, because you get 1 1 white and black spirit creature tokens with flying. Just a really awesome creature with death touch, too. It shouldn't be that difficult standing up to your opponent's board presence when you have creatures like this that have death touch. Perilous Mirror, when it dies, it deals 2 damage to target creature or player. Don't don't underestimate this like a lot of the other creatures in this deck being able to sacrifice them and bring them back on every turn it's going to add up and you're going to be punishing your opponents corsai sadist i believe that's how it's pronounced is a pretty unknown card it's exploit so when it enters the battlefield you may sacrifice a creature and by doing that target opponent loses two life and you gain two life so you could just have it sacrifice itself just be careful when you bring it back at the end of turn because then it won't count with Sheree on the following turn but a good creature nevertheless saltai emissary yet another good aristocrat when it dies we get another creature we get a 2-2 manifest definitely an underrated choice when people go to build charade decks and then tattered mummy a really solid creature when it dies each opponent loses two life this is one of the ones that your opponents are going to hate seeing the most because it doesn't really take that long for you to just grind away at their life totals and then we have yarox fen lurker kind of like a burglar rat but even better because when it enters the battlefield each opponent exiles a card from their hand so this will almost certainly stop your opponents from doing what they want to do punishing grave your decks by exiling those cards and a pretty sweet card that you really only see in charade decks bottle gnomes sacrifice it you gain three life being able to do this every turn is hilarious and for some recursion cadaver imp is the way to go a really cheap creature just a 1-1 flyer brings back creatures that are in your graveyard to your hand dutiful attendant is kind of the same deal here when it dies though 
We return another target creature card from our graveyard to our hand. Doesn't really follow the criteria of power 1 or less, but Grim Horus Bex is one of the better creatures you can throw into a deck like this. While it is a little bit more expensive than the average card here, a 50 cent rare that does help us draw more cards out of our deck, we're going to be killing off a lot of non-token creatures. We do have 40 of them after all, and this offers us some of the best card draw we have in the deck. Pilgrim's Eye and Skittering Surveyor, one of the bigger problems in the deck is maybe drawing into too many lands, so a big reason why you would want these these two is to just thin your deck out and you can do that pretty easily if you can keep killing them off bringing them back just get another swamp to your hand sky scanner kind of like the dusk legion zealot enters the battlefield lets us draw a card weapon craft enthusiast the fabricate 2 is brilliant every time we have it come back we're just going to get two more of those servos and in a similar sense to pilgrim's eye and skittering surveyor liliana shade lets us get another swamp to our hand marsh flitter just gets us two more tokens really good creatures to have if you want to establish a bit of board presence Mindless Automaton is one of those creatures that's going to help us get some more card draw. Enters with two plus one plus one counters, but we can remove them, which means it'll die to draw a card. And since it dies at zero zero, we can bring it back with Charay, and it enters with another two counters. And Siege Gang Lieutenant is kind of like another Marsh Flitter, but this time getting us two goblins with the ability to sacrifice a goblin and have target player lose one life and we gain a life, so it's even better. And Vindictive Vampire, because it is one of those cheaper aristocrats, we can really take advantage of getting rid of all of our other creatures with sack outlets by forcing our opponents to lose a lot of life. And Whisper Blood Liturgist is not one power itself, but it'll let you sacrifice two creatures to return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, which will really just add to whatever you're able to sacrifice. Nothing but good for the deck. And probably the most important thing for the deck, aside from just having a lot of those good, cheap creatures, is having efficient sack outlets where you don't have to pay any mana to sacrifice a creature. I showed you earlier Dark Privilege, but we also have something like Fallen Eye ideal it'll give whatever creature we have flying we could sacrifice a creature to give that creature plus two plus one until land a turn it's a really good aura because if it would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield you can return it to its owner's hand i don't want to say it's a win con but it could help you deal commander damage but it's mainly in here to be a good sack outlet we do have some one-time sack outlets like altars reap and costly plunder where we can just sacrifice some creatures to get some quick card draw we want something a little bit more permanent though blood throne vampire we could sacrifice a creature to give her plus two plus two until end of turn. Maybe not the best sack outlet that you could have in this deck, but when you consider it doesn't cost you any mana to sacrifice a creature, it does exactly what we need it to do. Disciple of Grizzle Brand. We do have to pay a mana, but we can sacrifice a creature to gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Even if you have to pay a little bit of mana, being able to sacrifice a creature is still important. Blood Flow Connoisseur. Again, it's going to get too big for Charade, but we can still sacrifice a creature for free. And Corpse Blockade is probably one of the best sack outlets in the deck because it is a one power creature it doesn't change its power so we should be able to bring it back with charade we can sacrifice another creature for free it's a pretty good blocker because it can also give itself death touch it's just a really powerful thing to have in the deck and if you wanted to pay a little bit more mana vampiric rites is another way we can sacrifice a creature and we get card draw so now that we went through pretty much the core of the deck, there are some win cons in here. It all relies on keeping Sheree out there and being able to just milk this mechanic over and over again. I'm talking about the trio from Corset 2014, Festering Newt, Bog Brew Witch, and Bubbling Cauldron. This is very good for a budget deck because individually, they're not that bad when you compare it to the rest of the deck. Festering Newt is probably the weakest when it dies, target creature and opponent controls, gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. It's it's minus four minus four instead if you control the bog brew witch so it's nothing too special the bog brew witch at least lets you tutor for the other two and bubbling cauldrons probably the best one because you can just sacrifice a creature to gain four life you can also sacrifice a creature named festering newt to have each opponent lose four life and then you gain life equal to the life lost that way so it is a fun little combo, a little interaction there. So if it is left out there for a couple turns, you should gain a ton of advantage off of it. One of the biggest reasons why I wanted to build this deck for you was because of this interaction. Both the Bog Brew Witch and the Festering Newt have one power, so we can bring them back with Charade. And the final card I have to show you is a really cheap win con. This is all the way back from Mirrodin, Lightning Coils. Whenever a non-token creature you control is put into a graveyard from play, you put a charge counter on Lightning Coils. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Lightning Coils has five or more charge counters on it you remove all of them and you put that many 3-1 red elemental creature tokens with haste into play you do have to remove them from the game at the end of the turn though 
this is worth it. This is so worth it because in addition to being like a 60 cent rare, it offers so much power for a deck where we're doing nothing but wanting to sacrifice our creatures every player's turn. So by the time it is our upkeep, it's not unrealistic to say you have 10 counters on this card, which will offer you about 30 power with haste. It's not pretty bad for a budget deck under $20. But anyway guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you're interested in the deck, again, the links will be in the description below. Also check out the affiliate link to tcgplayer.com. It'll help support the channel. You guys are awesome. Have a wonderful day. Vort here signing off. See you all next video.